Hi, my name is Anna Swantonowski, and I am a field tech for Johns Manville here in Colorado. Today we're going to talk about uh, cold storage details and how we tie in a roof to a wall and what the critical elements of that detail are. So what we're going to do today is a metal drip edge detail. So what we've done here is we've already started our roof assembly. Here's our deck. We've got two layers of insulation and a cover board. We've used this one inch ISO board to space out. What we want is a one inch gap between our wall panel and our roof system. So I'm gonna pull that out right now. You can see what that looks like. And then you can see in here, this is what we call a thermal break. And what we've done is we saw cut the metal on the outside of this insulated panel. And what that does is it keeps cold air or uh, cold energy from uh, traveling all the way out to the outside of the building. It's gonna stop here. Everything needs to be continuous. Our building envelope needs to be continuous and our, um, our thermal needs to be continuous. And that's for a lot of reasons. Uh, condensation is the biggest one. Warm, moist air is going to try to find its way into cool, dry spaces. And when that happens, that warm, moist air can creep in. And as soon as it hits what's called the dew point, it's going to condensate. And then we get moisture in the system. That moisture is going to freeze thaw, freeze, thaw, expand, and we're gonna introduce a ton of water into the system. So it's really important that we get those details right. And like any roofing system, our vulnerable areas are gonna be at our perimeter, around our penetrations, anytime we're uh, switching materials, so when we're going from roof to wall, that kind of thing. So we're gonna show you a little bit of what that looks like. What we wanna do is we wanna fill this gap with foam. Typically, you're gonna do it with something like this. This is a what they call froth pack, uh, two-part. I'm gonna spray that in, it's gonna expand and really fill this entire cavity. For demo purposes, we're gonna do it with this. Essentially the same stuff, but a little bit more user-friendly for what we're trying to do today. I'm gonna fill this cavity. We're gonna allow that to expand. And what this is gonna do is it's essentially gonna marry our two pieces of insulation, this insulated cavity and our metal wall panel and our roof insulation. So it's gonna bond the two of those as it expands and fills up. So this is our two inch wide uncured butyl tape. Looks like this. Here's a little piece of it so you can see when we pull it out, it is uncured, it does not go back. So what we're gonna do is apply this over our fastener heads and it's gonna act as an air seal behind our cleat for our metal edge. So I'm gonna start it over here on this side and I'm gonna cover our fasteners. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we've already done here. So the first thing that we've done is we put a 16 gauge metal channel over the top of our roof panel and we fastened it 12 inches on center. And then the other thing that you'll notice we've done is we've taken a trowel grade polyurethane sealant and we filled the ridges in our wall panel. And the reason that we do that is so we have a nice level surface because when we properly terminate something, we want um, an air seal with good compression. And so if we have gaps behind our compression, we're not gonna get that good compression. So we wanna make sure we fill all of that. You wanna make sure it's trowel grade because it will run. I'm gonna press that in around our fastener heads. And then I'm gonna peel that backing off. And when we come back with our metal cleat, that's gonna compress. So we're not super worried about how well it's sticking right now. And because it is butyl, there's no need for primer. And if our fill foam gets a little high, we can just trim it with an insulation knife right off the top. And here comes our TPO membrane. 
We're gonna fold that over. These details do apply to TPO, PVC, and EPDM. Um, you can also do bituminous systems on cold storage roofs. You can just contact us for details on those. And for assistance on any of these details, we do have a full technical staff that can help you with that. These should always be considered guidelines and you should always use these in cooperation with your designer of record to make sure you get a good, tight building envelope design. So there's our membrane. Now I'm gonna fasten on our three inch metal cleat. So I've marked where that's gonna go. So these are our sheet metal screws. They have a nice low profile head so we can fit that metal tightly over the top. So you can see, if you look behind here, that butyl tape has bridged the gap between the membrane and the wall panel. And so what we've done is we've made a continuous air and vapor barrier. And a vapor barrier, a class one vapor barrier, is, has a perm rating of less than 0.1. That means we're letting very little water vapor through. And so by using that butyl tape to marry the two surfaces, we've got that continuous building envelope that we're talking about. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put on our drip edge. And this is gonna start to look very much like a typical TPO edge detail. So I'm gonna start with our water cutoff mastic. And our screws are gonna sit about an inch and a half in from the edge. So that's about where I'm gonna run this bead of water cut off. So then we're gonna take our drip edge, turn it over, fit it into our cleat, and slide it up over our membrane. So there again, that water cutoff mastic is just additional air seal. So now we're gonna grab our fasteners again and fasten this in, six inches staggered centers. Again, we're gonna use our sheet metal screws. I'm gonna start here on the end. I'll hold this tight. So now we've put our drip edge on. As you can see, we fastened on the top, six inches on center, staggered. Want to keep it at least about an inch and a half away from the perimeter here. But what this has done is now we have another layer of water cutoff or air seal and compression. So we've got a nice tight sort of belt and suspenders perimeter detail. So now all we need to do is strip this in. So I'm going to prime the surface, the metal and the TPO with our uh, single ply low VOCO primer. We're gonna let that flash off. We're gonna put our cover tape on and we'll be just about done. So this is our single ply low VOC TPO primer. So I'm gonna stir that up, make sure it's well mixed. And then I'm just gonna take a regular chip brush. We always wanna make sure we extend the primer out just a little bit farther then our cover tape is gonna extend because we wanna make sure we have full contact with that cover tape onto primer. Those loose edges will peel off over time, so we wanna make sure they're fully secure. As with all primers, less is more. So we wanna make sure we do a nice thin coat just to promote adhesion.
And we're gonna give that a little bit of time to flash off. So what we want is for that to be tacky to the touch, but it doesn't come off on your finger. If it's still coming off on your finger, we need to give it a few more minutes. So we'll let that sit until it's ready to go. And then we'll put our cover tape on. So our last step here to kind of seal this edge is we want to strip over our drip edge. So I have a four foot piece of TPO cover tape here. We've primed this, we can touch it now. It's a little tacky, but it doesn't come off on my fingers, which means it's ready to go. So we're gonna kind of line that up and we want to push it as far out to the edge as possible. We want a minimum three inch lap over onto the metal. We want to make sure we get as far out past those screws as we can. So we're gonna push that just about as far to the edge as we can. Peel back our edge here and get it set. And that's gonna stick pretty easily to our primed surface. So I'm gonna work pretty quickly. Peel this out, try to keep that caulk as, as intact as I can. I'm gonna smooth this out with my hands. And this is a pressure sensitive, sensitive adhesive. So I'm gonna take a silicone roller and roll over it. Make sure we get nice adhesion. So we've got that stuck down. And then as a last step, because this is a drip edge, right? So we have water coming over this edge. We wanna make sure we reinforce the edges of this so we don't get any curling or rolling over time, just as an extra sealant. So I'm gonna take our single ply low VOC caulk and I'm gonna come down both edges of this. So I'm gonna do the front edge first. We'll clean that up in a little bit. And this back edge is our leading edge, right? This is where the water is going to be coming over. So this is most important. So we want to make sure we get a nice bead of caulk along this to really seal that edge. So we have our completed drip edge detail for TPO membrane for cold storage. Uh, we have lots of redundancies in our air seal and our vapor seal, and this is gonna be a good long lasting perimeter detail. If you have any questions on this or any of our other details, you can contact uh, JM, and you can also find our complete cold storage design guide at jm.com.